Good morning, Nigeria, and thank you for staying with us. You're just in time for our top story. Now, it's going to be a very hot discussion because we have none other than the National Publicity Secretary for the All Progressives Congress Party. We do have Alhaji Lai Mohammed here to take your questions. You asked for it. Now we have someone that can speak on behalf of their presidential candidate to tell you all about the controversies, the truths and the lies, and perhaps, you know, give you a bit more. We, have, we call them a very, um, we call them the VIP, but from our perspective, it's called the very important political guest on today's show. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Welcome. So um, you can go to facebook.com forward slash cool TV Nigeria and ask your questions right away or go to at GMNS cool TV on Twitter and ask your questions. Well, let's start with the latest. And I think this is the loudest of controversies. Now, everyone's talking about the certificates. Should I use the word scandal at this point? Because um, now the latest of information has it that the army has once again come out to say they do not, they are not in possession of um, the former Major General Buhari certificate. What would you say in that regard? Well, I think um, uh, my first reaction when I read the news yesterday was to wonder at the level of desperation of the President and the PDP. And that in an attempt to stop the Rabuari from running at all costs, they are not even you know, careful enough, and they are ready to even drag the military into politics. So you definitely think the military has been, um, you know, it's PDP that's influencing the military. Absolutely, I have no what doubt in my mind. You see, if you know that on January 4th, this year, barely, you know, 14 days ago, the same Brigadier Ululeye, or Laleye, told the world that we are in possession of Jerambuari's documents. Exactly what the controversy is all about. In, exactly, in, in an interview in Granted Punch, he said, the military has a copy of all the credentials of all their serving and retired officers. Now, what happened between the 4th of January and the 20th of January for the same officer to come out and say the army does not have? Well, so what, what proof is there that PDP or who is, uh, that, that the changes are linked to PDP? Isn't that, in a way, pointing a finger without having evidence of, of you know, where to point the finger you to? You see, when these kind of conspiracies are, are being um, put together, they don't invite witnesses. But if you know that the commander in chief of the armed forces is the president of this country, then you know that it is not far-fetched that the presidency is the one putting pressure on the military. Otherwise, does it make sense for anybody to think that a man will rise to become a general in the Nigerian army without having a primary school living certificate? Because you see, people don't even understand what the Constitution say, says. The Constitution does not ask for a university degree. Mm -hmm. does even, it does not even ask for a secondary school certificate. He simply says, you must have a living certificate. Now, it goes back to define what is this school certificate. It is either a primary school certificate, a secondary school certificate. Now, are you saying... So, let me just quickly chip in. We had a lawyer, um, Barrister Oshama, the other day, and he actually broke this down that, you know, giving us um, more details into what the certificate's all about. And now you mentioned it's really not a school certificate and you're breaking it's second, it down. It's not, it's not it's really you're saying yeah. it's not secondary. Yeah. It might be primary. But he did say it, it should be an SSCE at no, least. The Constitution is very clear on the matter. Mm. It says it could be a teacher training, a, 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 a That's the teacher training school yeah. or equivalent. It could be a primary school living certificate with 10 years 
cognizance expressed in the public or private sector, uh, service. Are you seeing that a man that rose into the army, in the army to the to rank of major general, does not possess this? I had the opportunity of speaking to Jerry Buali yesterday, as soon as um, this uh, story broke out. And he told me very categorically that he had been the army secretary himself during his career. Okay. And he knows exactly what was in his file. Now, you see, the matter, I think, has gone so awry that General Olaleye, in an attempt to, uh, to, 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 to sell a bad product, said yesterday that actually when you are being commissioned into the officer's corps, you must present the original certificate to the army board. But as it appears in the 1960s, this procedure was not followed. Now, in other words, he's seen that those who joined the army in the early 60s probably don't have any certificates. See, this is a problem when you want to destroy one person, you end up destroying a whole entire institution. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now, then look, let's look at the other side of the coin. In year 2003, General Muhammad Bali contested for president. In 2007, yeah. he did. Yeah. In 2011, he did. And, and at every occasion, all he did was to swear to the affidavit that, look, when I was in detention, my house was burgled. All my documents, you know, were okay. stolen. Okay. However, the records of my service you will find with the military. And in 2003, 2007, 2011, nobody raised any dust over this. So you think the reason why it's coming up right now is because of desperation in no, your you words? You see, there is no doubt in my mind. You see, anybody who, who has observed the kind of change in the last two months will not be surprised if the president is frightened. Alhaji, we'll let you continue, but let's just invite the community to please ask the Alhaji questions we're, we're um, discussing with the National Publicity Secretary for the All Progressives Congress Party. You can go on to facebook.com forward slash cool TV Niger, tweet at GMNS cool TV or call 12 7896 one and 12 You have questions, as long as you keep them you know, stripped and devoid of anything vulgar and insulting, we'll be ready to take them and um, he'll be here to answer all your questions. Put them through. So you were saying? Yeah. You see, look at the others, uh, look at another perspective. It's not as if General Buhari's educational advancement or training stopped the moment he entered the Nigerian Army. So in 1961, he entered the Nigerian military school. This is a precursor to what we now call the Nigerian Defense Academy. To do so, you must also pass the exam set by the school. From there, he went to Mons College in Aldershot in the UK and came out with a certificate. After which, going through the ranks, for you to go from major to lieutenant colonel, you must go to staff college which he attended. After which he went to the, was the, 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 the US War College. Now, are you saying that even if he went into that school, into, into the military, military institution with the primary school, all the, courses has, you know, all the courses he has attended over the years, including Aldershot, including the Staff College in Jaji, including the War College in the USA, in which was a classmate to Colin, uh, Colin Powell, Mm -hmm. You mean all this would not qualify him mm -hmm. to run for, for president? Let me, let me ask a follow-up question. Did your party, I mean, after the merger, before the merger, the ACN, and uh, did they scrutinize his certificates, his documents as presented before he was picked as the presidential candidate? Because it's, it's, it's enough to just say, oh, this is my affidavit. This, here are my qualifications, you know, top of my head. I, I went to this, and then we know that because you're a general, you definitely must have, you know, it's most likely that you've had, you've had training and trainings. So were, were there documents that he provided and you scrutinized and cleared him, screened him for this position? Uh, let me repeat 
circumstances. Major Mohamed Bouali was the head of state between 1985. His government was overthrown. He was thrown into detention. While he was in detention, his house was buggered. All his records were stolen. Okay. So when he came out, what did he do? He swore an affidavit of loss. Now, in two, like I said, in 2003, when he contested, all he did was swear to this affidavit and yes. ask Einek to check with, sorry, ask Einek to check with the military for his credentials. I mean, if it was clear to run 203, it means then that yes. Einek was, was satisfied. In 2007, Dito, 2011, Dito. Now, in 2014, when he came for screening, okay. he explained the same thing and he gave, you know, his affidavit that, look, I, my, if you want to check my records, check with the military. Also, you know, I hate to stick on the subject of controversy because I do hope we can go through some of, you know, the manifesto that APC has. But, you know, we, we saw on Monday the advert that was put out by the Akiti state governor, Fayoshe. And although many people have come out to say that it's, you know, it was, it's a bad thing to have done, very, dis very distasteful, but... At the same time, although um, the, um, President Goodluck Jonathan has, you know, separated himself from Fayoshe to say this is not his opinion, is it wrong for Nigerians to question whether or not, you know, Buhari is fit enough health-wise with the, the stories that have come out, you know, is he healthy enough to um, run as president? Or is this another tactic by PDP to distract us and not focus on issues at hand, such as, you know, what will APC do if they are elected? I think I will start first with the reaction of the president. I think the president disappointed Nigerians by not condemning that particular advert. You see, the president, I think, a couple of days ago, signed a non-violence pact yeah. with other presidential okay. candidates. Yeah. And the contents of that pact was that none of the candidates of the political parties would do or say anything uh, <coughs> that would uh, denigrate the other or that would um, incite, you know, hatred. Mm -hmm. Now, if on behalf of the president, Governor Ayofayo, she put out an advert we did not only wish the general dead, hmm. but actually incited a certain part of the country against the other. The least we expected the president to do was to have condemned it. It's not just enough for distance. It wasn't enough to just distance It's, it's yeah. really good that you started on the peace pact, but right. let's quickly talk with um, Mike, who's calling in from Abuja. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to the show. What's your question? My question is, let's the Leo Mohammed just goes straight to the question and answer. If Buhari does not have a valid certificate of what they are asking him, he should go ahead and answer the public. Stop criticizing PDP. Is PDP or good luck that asked him not to go and uh, get his results? All right, thank you very much, Mike. And I believe that you've answered I that in three different ways. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you I don't very think much, Mike. I'm sure you joined in late. Thank That's you. why you caught yeah. us you know, at the yeah. very yeah. tail end. So let's right. get back to the peace yeah. part. Now, so. For the president not to have come in and to kind of come condemned, condemned mm -hmm. I think he, he, he's, um, he disappointed you know, many Nigerians. Secondly, yes, the issue of fitness. The moment you're running for office, yes. I think nothing again is private in your life. Mm. So really, the Nigerians have a right to, to know about the state of health yeah. of who's going to runs, you know, who's running for office of president. Absolutely, yes. But there are ways you can express these concerns or ask these questions without, you know, uh, going to the level of depravity of Ayo Fayoshi. The, the issue of the General Bwari's health should not be a source of worry to anybody. Because I have had two personal experiences with General Buhari that convinces that you know these two experiences have convinced me that the man is fit, 
to run for office. Well, was there any um, medical certificate provided? None at all. To the party? No, 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 no. no. You see, uh, if you look at INEC uh, regulations, you don't need to submit any certificate of health before you run for office. No, no, no. But you see, on sometimes in November last year, our party had a salvation rally in Abuja. At this salvation rally in Abuja, uh, we, General Buhari led thousands of Nigerians and members of the party. And we had to trek from the Eagle Square to the Transcorp Hotel, back to the police headquarters, and back to the Eagle Square. I'm talking about uh, just more than, you know, probably six kilometers. And General Buhari was at the head of this uh, 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 match, and he did not break his sweat. On Friday, when I joined the campaign train, we left in the morning from Abuja to Makodi. It took us two hours, you know, to get to this venue of the rally from Makodi Airport. About two hours, you know, for the rally. We went back again to the airport, took a plane to Abajana in Kogi State, you know, drove another two hours to get to Lokoja, had another campaign in Lokoja, drove back by road to um, Abuja okay. on Friday evening. And then by 9 a.m. on you know, uh, Saturday morning, Ujara Buhari was again at the airport, took a flight again to Joss to address a rally. From Joss, we went to Lafia on and the same day. And with all of that, that showed fitness. I, I, mean, I, I mean, if a man is, suffering, is, is dying, like they claim, or is going to die very soon, of course, he wouldn't have that kind of stamina. Okay. But, but I, I think we should not be so desperate in our quest for office to destroy every, you know, to, 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 to destroy, you know, and uh, overlook decency. Okay, okay, so now that we've put, we've, you know, we've gone over the controversy now, if APC are elected, what is APC going to do for Nigeria? That might seem like a very broad question, but it all, at the end of the day, it all boils down to that. Aside from the squabbling and this person saying this and that, what can APC do for Nigeria? Just before you answer the question, let's quickly go on a quick, um, let's go on a quick break. And when we come back, we will not get into the manifesto proper. Do stay with us. Good morning, Nigeria, and we're just getting into the part two of our discussions, and we still have the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress Party in person of Alhaji Lai Mohammed, and he's telling all about the controversies and now the manifesto. So, um, and I asked you a question about the manifesto. If elected, what is the plan? I would have preferred when elected. Uh oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the first thing the APC did, as soon as the merger was consummated, was to engage consultants to conduct a survey. And this survey was to find out exactly what exactly is wrong with Nigeria and what exactly do Nigerians want. The outcome of this survey, which in which is one of the largest ever undertaken in Nigeria because it involved over 29,000 people who well, asked questions, came out with a very astonishing result, which that one, that by a margin of three to one, Nigerians believe that the major problem is jobs, jobs, jobs. Closely followed by 54% Nigerians who believe that corruption is another major issue. And finally, insecurity. Okay. So we now drafted our manifesto around the outcome of this survey, which means we must create jobs. We must make the country secure. And we must also fight insecurity. And that's what informs our manifesto. manifesto. In equal measure? No, 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 no. You see, because 
and they're all related. Because mm -hmm. if there's no insecurity, how will you Absolutely. get jobs? Absolutely. There's What's no the security. Point of having a job? They can't, there cannot be development. Mm -hmm. If there's corruption, there can be development. So they're all interlinked. Yeah. And yeah. They, so we have various, you know, so we have to break it down. Okay, sir, so please let's just interrupt you once more. We have Albert from Lagos who wants to ask you a question. Good morning, Albert. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, I have a question for uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed. Go ahead, please. Now, can you turn off, please hold on a minute. Can you turn down the volume of your radio? It's echoing. We're getting television. the reverberation. Okay, please. okay, let me just get out of it okay, anyway. Yes, thank you. Now, he is telling us that uh, we will ask him the question of uh, whether the, the panel screen him, you know, ask him all these questions about his certificate, Mohammed, I mean, Gerard Buhari's uh, certificate. Now, even if uh, Jira Mohammed's uh, uh, certificate was born or destroyed in any place or by fire by the, the school he attended, can't he go back there and obtain the, the statement of, uh, uh, of his uh, uh, certificate or write it into Wayek to get his certificate and uh, or statement of result and save the nation of this embarrassment? How can Lai Mohammed, who is a lawyer, coming out to defend Buhari? Uh, without any certificate and telling us he's born here, born there, go back to Wayek, write to Wayek and obtain the statement of... All right, thank you very much. You got the meat of the question. Well, right. I think, um, <clears throat> you see, we're overlooking certain facts. You no, know, certain facts. One, if you have served in the military and you know the code of conduct of the military and you know that your records of service is with the military. The most natural thing to do is to say, go to the military and please check for my credentials. And the fact that this happened in 2003, 2007, 2011, with the same INEC, not a different body. Hmm. And I'm not aware that INEC laws have changed between 2010 and today. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and more importantly is that, you see, people are just being mischievous. I know that people have gone on their own to Google General Buhari and given out, you know, the details of his educational qualification and his career. Now, the last time this matter came up, General Buhari said, okay, no problem. I'm going to end this controversy. I will instruct my chief of staff to write a letter to the chief of army staff directing the military secretary. To provide something. To provide it was written. It was the outcome of that letter that apparently Olalaya came out yesterday and said they, they, they cannot find the certificates. Okay. okay. We have, a, we have a, another caller, hmm. Idris, is he? calling from Abuja. So we'll let you continue. Right. Let's just um, get Take this a question in. Good morning, Idris. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I want to chicken into this contribution. You have a question, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The issue of certificate or not certificate has not arrived. We are talking of performance here. Certificate is just a basis of the you need food to qualify you for something. Then in terms of performance, the president has a PhD and is not performing. So certificate should not be an easy gift. Uh, she should not be an issue here. I'm talking of somebody that will perform for us. The security, right. health, everything is crumbling in this country. So Thank you very much, Andres. Of, uh, I think we're all still staying on this certificate. Yes. And it's, yeah. it's, it's best no, no. to just lay to rest. No, no, just just no, no you see, what, you see, what, you see, what we say is that if I worked in a place for, because I think Jerry Bari joined the army in 1961, and the most of left in 1985, which means he spent all his, you know, child, you know, adult life in the army. So when the issue of certificates came, of course, he, natu the natural thing he did was to, you know, Clarify. direct, you know, the authorities to the military. And in 2003, 2007, they obliged INEC, 
Otherwise, you should ask INEC what were the qualifications, what was the base for him to run in those, you know, in 203, 207, 2011. The question, the spotlight should actually be on the army, in your words, and also and on the INEC. Exactly. Okay, and let's move away from no, this. No, it's more important. There's so many and then, no, 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 I think also, Nigerians should please ask the question. What happened between January 4th, mm -hmm. 2015, and January 20th, 2015, when the same brigadier, Olaleye, said we have boy certificate and yesterday he will no longer have his certificate. Two, he was reading from a file that Erabuali had a credit in English, a credit in mathematics. Yes. Where did that come from? And why would it take the army 30, because between 1961 and today is about 54 years. Why will it take the army? Okay, can I, so we really would love to touch upon some very important issues apart from the certificate and I believe you've, you know, told us as much as you, you do know. We, we, let's just quickly continue on the insecurity, corruption and um, jobs, as you mentioned, if elected and then you said when elected. So can we quickly wrap up that because we have well, you see, The first thing angle. we intend to do in the area of jobs is to create three million jobs every year. How? By taking advantage of our decaying infrastructure. Today, our roads are in very poor condition. We, need, we are in a deficit, deficit of 17 million houses. Our power situation is erratic. Water is not for everybody. And our rail lines can be improved. So we intend to engage in massive public works programs that will employ many people. It's construction of houses, roads, real, real, real networks, schools, water. Now, this is the first immediate step we're going to take to engage many Nigerians and put Nigeria back to work. Okay. And but this is only, you know, in the in short term. In the long term, what we are going to do to sustain that job creation is to ensure that we diversify our economy and move it away from the monoculture of you know, petroleum, oil, and gas by going into massive agriculture, mechanized agriculture, and manufacturing. And to do this, you must also undertake massive reforms in your land, in, 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 you must undertake massive land reforms. Because without a land reform, you would have no land to build houses or to farm. The Land Use Act, as it is today, does not allow for large scale farming, neither does it allow for massive housing. Okay. Because today, you still need the governor's consent before you can even use your title to go and borrow money. So hmm. we intend to recreate and reintroduce freeholds and leaseholds. That way you can now create a mortgage market. Because with that ability to change titles, you can create a, a mortgage market. Still on the manifesto, I believe Sunday has a question from Ikorodu. Good morning, Sunday. Hello, Sunday, are you Sunday. here? Can you hear us? Hello, Sunday. Oh, we just lost him. But let's quickly touch upon insecurity, insecurity because still on insecurity, let's wrap it all, you know, let's try and, you know, um, add another. Inciting statements related to the peace pact. Um, it's common knowledge that um, um, your, um, the APC's uh, campaign chairman, that is um, the, cross, um, the River State Governor Rotimi Amechi, said something that blew people's minds and some are saying that is an inciting statement that will actually you know hamper on the security of our nation making mention that if the elections were rigged come 14th february 2015 apc would form a parallel government some have called that treasonable some have called now, that lots of things now tell me what is wrong with that statement what does that you not say if we lose the election will form a program. He said, if elections are not free and fair. How do you know that the elections are not free and fair? You see, 
We've run elections before in Nigeria which are free and fair, and there was no single whimper anywhere. Now, you see, how do you know elections are not free and fair? Very simple. Elections will be free and fair, one, when there's a level playing field for everybody. Elections will be free and fair when the government remains absolutely neutral in the conduct of election. Can they be free, fair, and safe? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Because absolutely. I feel we because can't in 20, miss that in, out as well. In 1993, it was free, fair, and safe. There was no neutralization. Okay, we have, we have a, a, a call, Luke from Ajar. Let's quickly take his call. Good morning, Luke. Hello. Okay, I think we've lost him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Elections will be free and fair. And safe. And I need to, I just want to keep no, adding see, that in. See, because that's what the Peace Pact is all no, about. No, no, you see... We had an issue in, Kaduna, was it Kaduna, just yesterday, linked with the APC, with youth, and um, there was an uproar. I think one person, someone even died. What, you see, what was the issue? You see, once government is unable to be neutral in the election, it won't be free and fair. You can secure a country and be fair. We have policemen on the road. Lagos is safe. But... The moment policemen start, you know, targeting a particular group, a particular ethnic, ethnic group, or a particular, you know, uh, uh, age group, then it, you, you, you will see that people So you're saying vote. militarization at the polling unit is it's a no-no no from No, no for us. Absolutely. Let's hear from Usman, who's calling from Kwara. This will be our final caller. Hello? Usman, good morning. Hello? All right, we, we, that would be it for the calls. Let's just quickly wrap up. Um, you know, you're still talking about militarization, and it's still a no-no. Why is it a no-no? I mean, we, like um, Eno says, we've seen pre-election violence. Doesn't that give us an inkling to actually put these military men on standby just you, in you case? You see, my experience in politics is that there is never violence unless the security forces aid and abet it. Why isn't there violence every day in Lagos? Or in Kano? Or in Porakot? No. The moment the government is unable to remove it itself, itself from the elections, hmm. there'll be violence. Take the issue of Oshun. In Oshun election, there were over 60,000 Security people in court. Even people who are not security men who are given uniforms to behave like security men. As alleged. I, not alleged. I was a victim. Hmm. In Oshun State, I was abducted. Okay. This is an eyewitness report. And what was my friends? They said I was wondering at my age. My party was running an election in Oshun State. Our party, we moved our headquarters to Oshun State to give support to the candidate. On the eve of the election, we were going to the governor's uh, you know, lodge for a press company, for he was, he was trying to have a, 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 a state address, and we were picked up. So how can you say alleged? I was a victim. Mm. And those who picked me up. They were not. I looked at them. They were wearing hoods. They did not behave like civilized, trained policemen or, you know, security men. And what was my first thing they said I was wondering? Oh. Now, how come that when you send soldiers and policemen to a state for election, only members of one political party are arrested, not the other party? Okay, sir. We have to quickly wrap up at this point, but um, your final thoughts on the Peace Pact and, you know, bordering on inciting statements like we mentioned the parallel government you know other quarters making inciting statements what will be you know we we do know that there are no custodians to this peace pact whether or not you're breaking it because you know even the apc your quarters they're saying that the um editorial the advertorial by the ikiti Go state government was not you know was actually an inciting statement it was an inciting advertorial so what would you advise or what would, what would you suggest to happen if at all some, something is considered inciting and what to you is considered inciting? You see, uh, the president in particular, we need to take the lead in this matter. 
And with all due respect, I do, it's not giving a very good example. When a president goes to a campaign and he calls a group of people hypocrites, or the president goes to a campaign and on the campaign rostrum is reading the cool speech of one general to justify why another retired general should not be elected, it's not showing good example. It should be, you see, if I've been president for six years, I should have enough issues to convince the people why I should be re-elected. Okay. The president should walk his talk. It's not enough for him to invite people to sign a peace pact, and he cannot even rein in his own supporters. And like I said, the silence of Mr. President yesterday and anyway, over this advert is extremely, extremely unacceptable. Because, if not because we in the APC appealed to our members all over Nigeria to remain calm, that advert could have set up another intra -ethno, inter ethnic trouble. How do you draw up an advert saying that five people have, four people have died, another person is going to die, and they are from the same, you know, zone of the country. That's, we hope we're going to be seeing more of the manifesto and less uh, of the uh, name calling. Uh, absolutely. Yes. That is it. Yes. Well, this is exactly where we'll drop it. But the conversation, as always, continues on facebook.com forward slash cool TV Nigeria. We want to say a big thank you to you, um, al Haji okay. Mohammed, for coming and being with us to discuss all matters concerning APC. We'll be going over to Bernard on the street. Let's find out what traffic is like.